at the Gulf Islands. Thank you. I asked my honorable friend from Moody, from, uh, Moody Port Kells, thank you for the speech. I'm looking at C-49 and seeing what essentially looked to me like some, some missed opportunities to do more to rationalize the relationship between shipping by rail and shipping by sea. Specific point that I want to raise and just get his thoughts. We can get back to this perhaps with other legislation. We have very poor communication and advanced planning. The honorable member mentioned uh, better information from the grain growers to know about when they're able to ship. But when they're able to ship by rail, there's often not sufficient capacity. We then have large container ships coming into the port of Vancouver. They'll have as many as four separate compartments that they need to fill with grain. They'll hang out in the port of Vancouver, come in, be able to fill one hold, and then they have to go out and wait again. Now, where they tend to wait is hanging out in anchorages, which are uh, legal anchorages, but for which the Gulf Islands receive no compensation for the use of the space or the annoyance, the inconvenience, the noise, the lights. They wait in anchorages in my riding and in the riding of the member for Nanaimo Ladysmith till they can come back into the Port of Vancouver. This is inefficient, costly, and an annoyance. And I wonder if Transport Canada couldn't do more to create better planning between uh, which would advance would be advantage to the shipper, an advantage to the grain grower, and certainly an advantage to people living adjacent to those areas where container ships are backed up and waiting through the inefficiencies of our loading and unloading in the Port of Vancouver and connectivity to the trains that deliver the, the, the grain. I hope the question isn't too complex for my honourable colleague. I'm sure he's familiar with the problem as well. The Honourable Member for Fleetwood Port Kells. Well, many thanks to the Honourable Member for that question. Absolutely. The, the efficiency of our system means dollars, dollars that quite often get passed on to the farmers because they're price takers, as well as the reputational uh, damage that we suffer when we can't deliver our goods and services on time to our international customers. So it makes all the sense in the world for Bill C-49 to lead toward, first of all, the more transparent sharing of performance data. As well, there are provisions that I didn't talk about that allows uh, C49 through the rail companies to ensure that there can be investments in additional capacity. Our rail hopper fleet is wearing out and we need the railways and perhaps government as well to contribute to the refurbishment of that fleet with more efficient cars. That's all included in C49 so that everybody is if you like paying their fair way in order to get an efficient system that will prevent the kind of issues that my honourable friend um, raises. Questions and comments?